Since the time of Shakyamuni Buddha, the Dharma drum has been a central, vital, and indispensable practice method. The drum beat tells us, wake, wake up, wake, wake up, wake, wake up, wake, wake up your sleepy mind, wake, wake up your clouded, obscured mind, wake up, wake up to enlightenment. What does the drum symbolize? Does the sound of the drum have benefits? How do we practice with a drum? What do we do if we don't have a drum? How does its use vary from tradition to tradition? We try to answer these questions, and more, in this informative and helpful video. We'll demonstrate the correct way to use the drum in different traditions. All traditions of Buddhism practice with drums, from the elder traditions through to Mahayana, Shan and Zen and Vajrayana. The drum is a central focus in Chud, an advanced practice. In the Lotus Sutra, Chapter 12, it is written, I beat upon the Dharma drum, announcing my search for Dharma in the four directions. Several sutras mention the importance of drums, including the Sutra of the Great Dharma Drum and a chapter in the Golden Light Sutra Confession of the Golden Drum. In Universal Worthy Sutra it is said the sound of the Dharma Drum can be heard at the Gate of Thunder. More than 2500 years ago, the drum was an important component of Buddhist practice. In Buddha's time, the drum and subsequently the gong were used to gather everyone to announce the precepts, mealtimes, dharma talks. Even today, in many monasteries, the monks or nuns ring the temple bell and play the drum to call the community for practice. Just listening to the fish drum, sometimes called the sutra drum, immediately focuses your mind. The sound is associated in our minds with temples and practice. The practice of drumming combines breath, sutra chant, or mantra or nimbutsu, with repetitious, punctuated wooden drum raps. The rhythm of the drum amplifies our mindfulness practice. The monotonous, hypnotic sound of the drum actually seems to anchor the mind in the present moment faster, with more clarity and riveting focus than simply watching breath. Why is the drum so popular as a focus in Buddhism? As it was taught, before we are even born, the first sound everyone born into samsara hears is the sound of our mother's heartbeat. When we play the drum, our mind connects immediately to instinctive feelings of mother, protection, safety, womb and peacefulness. This resonance is key in Buddhism. We use the drum to wake the mind, and to remain focused on mindfulness, one of Buddha's most important practical methods of practices. In Chan or Zen, the central wooden drum is often called a fish drum. The symbolism relates to the fish, a sentient being whose eyes never close and appear to never sleep. Fish are one of the eight auspicious symbols in Buddhism. The wooden fish drum is ubiquitous in Buddhist temples in China, Japan, Vietnam and Korea. Buddha recognized the power of the drum to settle and focus the mind in early teachings and practices. Around the same time as Buddha, in the West, Pythagoras made a similar assertion. Today, psychology and science have identified both drumming and mindfulness meditation as helpful therapy for everything from stress to memory loss to supportive cancer care. See the information icon for related features for more information on this research. In Buddhism, drumming plays a bigger role than gongs, bells, and conch trumpets. Drums are pervasive through all traditions. In monasteries, they call the community to practice. In Zen and Chan we play the fish drum as we recite sutras or just to inspire mindfulness. In Vajrayana, we offer drum sound as one of the eight sensory offerings, a sound offered to the merit field of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. In Chud, it plays the central role, keeping us mindful on the practice. 
In many traditions, we drum in the teacher as he or she arrives to teach us, announcing the arrival of Dharma teachings with the Dharma drum. More importantly, traditionally, the drum is symbolic of Dharma speech, sutras, and the Dharma teachings. How does it make us mindful? Rather than sitting in silence, focusing on our breath or heartbeat, we focus on beating the drum, nothing else. Mindfully beating the drum at a steady, unwavering pace, like our mother's heartbeat. The sound of drum brings the mind to instant awareness. Instead of breath, we focus on the beat. The beat is the sound of Dharma. Similarly, in Chud practice, a highly advanced Vajrayana practice, we steadily play the Chud drum, a driving, powerful sound that focuses our mind on the complex visualizations. There is extensive evidence for the power of the drum, not only to focus the mind, but as an aid to meditation, stress relief, and some health issues. The Journal of Cardiovascular Medicine reported a consistent reduction of blood pressure anxiety and stress through drum playing. The Journal of Huntington's Disease reported it can improve cognitive function. The journal Evolutionary Psychology reported pain reduction benefits. Other reported benefits included improved immunity and help for emotional disorders. See the linked features for these references. Playing the fish drum is both an art and a focus, and well worth learning. If you don't have a fish drum, you can try wrapping a wood stick on a block of wood. Or just use a kitchen pot upside down. Ultimately, though, today, fish drums are elaborate, beautiful, and profoundly sacred, and one of the first meditative aids we learn to use. The key is regular beat. You choose a beat, usually a measured beat, and play as evenly as you can while you meditate or recite sutra or mantras. Why is this important? By tradition, the sound of the drum releases Dharma teachings. It also releases our agitation, our anger, pent-up emotions, obstacles. How does it do this? Science and psychology has established the basis for calming the mind and soothing our emotions. The origin of the fish drum legend memorably explains why the metaphorical fish symbolism can calm our emotions and anger. In the legend of the fish drum origin, a monk, on a 17-year quest to bring the precious sutras from India to China, found his journey was blocked by a wide, flooding river. A big fish appeared suddenly and offered to carry the monk across the river. He had earned negative karma as a human and was born as a fish. By carrying the monk, he would extinguish the negative karma with a meritorious act. However, on the return journey, because the monk had forgotten to make requests of the Buddha, the fish dumped him in the water, sutras and all. The sutras were ruined. The monk, full of anger, built a wooden fish. When he felt the anger rise up, he would beat the fish's head. To his shock, when he beat the head, the fish opened his mouth and vomited a character. After years of beating the head, from the fish's mouth, he retrieved what had been lost in the river. So, when you beat the fish drum, Imagine those Dharma characters vomiting from the mouth of the drum, the slit across the front of the wooden drum. The wooden drum is hollow, carved out carefully, to create a large, empty, resonating chamber. This is symbolic of the Buddhist concept of shunyata, or emptiness, or wisdom. For these reasons, reinforced by both the sacred sound of the drum and the symbolism, we recite sutras and mantras to the sound of the drum. It is also commonly used during the name praises, such as Namo Amitabha and reciting Nimbutsu. In Vajrayana, practices and Tibetan Buddhism, we likewise use the drum. And as with Chan or Zen, it is considered a sacred object. Three commitment objects are required for most sadhanas in Vajrayana, the drum or Damaru, the bell, and the Vajra. These, respectively, 
stand for the three jewels and also the body, speech, and mind of Buddha. Buddha's Dharma speech is the drum, Buddha's body is the Vajra, and mind or wisdom is the bell. In Tibetan Buddhism, any time we ask the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas to attend for offerings and practices, we start with drumming. When the chant master evokes the presence of the enlightened ones, we play the drum. During pujas, we play various drums and trumpets and bells, but the drum is always indispensable. The classical Tibetan Damaru drum is a two-sided drum that we spin in one hand rapidly to make offerings or call and evoke. The Tibetan drum is a one-handed instrument with the beaters attached by string to the drum. In this case, they are always held in the right hand, the hand of activity and skillful means. In Chud practice, where the drum is played constantly, it is likewise always held in the right hand, with the left hand holding the bell. Regardless of the drum or the tradition, it is important to treat the drum as a sacred dharma object. Never place on the floor. Never step over the drum. Always elevate the drum when not in use. Treat the drum as you would the Vajra, bell and mala and sutra texts. Remember the story of the monk and fish. By beating the drum, we expand the dharma with sacred sounds. The drum beat wakes up our minds trapped in delusions and obscured by obstacles. The drum's beat says, Awake! 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 Please consider supporting our Dharma mission, our mantra music project and our videos by becoming a supporting patron on Patreon at patreon.com slash buddhaweekly or as a supporting member at buddhaweekly.com support.